the structure was interesting. We talked about this in the first review of the film, where we end on the plot twist. We end on this idea that Katapa killed um, Amarendra Bahubali, right? And that um, we're essentially going to be taking ba- taken back through time to figure out what had happened in history and what led us to Mahendra Bahubali's existence right now and what he's meant to be doing. Initially, I felt like there was so much in the first movie that I couldn't really... Uh, there's so much in the first movie and yet so little of the story felt like it was told because we got to this point where by the end of the first movie, a few of us, main, mainly probably myself, was a little bit disappointed with the amount of resolution we got in the first film. After having learned that that first film is a part of the dual film structure, very similar to the three from Lord of the Rings and how they were shot concurrently, they were shot together and they were. And this one I think was meant to originally be one super long film that ended up being two that eased a little bit of that tension. Going into this movie, I was like, okay, we're gonna start with this, you know, flashback. How is this gonna, you know, feed the structure? How is this gonna improve on the previous movie? I felt like going into this one, the story became a lot more linear, going back in time and then leading us towards where eventually we knew we we would have to land in present day. I thought it was really cool for um, that to be the crux of the entire film, which is that knowing that this entire film has already happened, knowing that we've been given the ending, ironically, in the movie titled The Beginning, and now in the conclusion film, we would be taken through the beginning. Um, I thought that was quite ironic, quite interesting, and, and, a, and a cool ploy to take us through something now that we're extra, extra. Because I think with a story that's net new like this one, you need to develop a reason for the audience to watch it. And I think by giving us the ending and giving us that plot twist by the end of the first one, there's a lot of reason for me to be curious going into this film. That's all to say that I felt like the structure did benefit this film in a way. However, there were areas where I felt that it was lacking a little bit. At times, because of the nature of the actors being cast multiple times um, with both the protagonist. Yeah, I think with the protagonist basically playing both himself and his father, it was a bit confusing at times um, throughout this movie trying to figure out you know, is he playing his father still? Are we still in the flashback? I'm glad that the film didn't use film tropes like taking us back in time in grayscale or having this like kind of mirage version of uh, this dreamlike sake that was that was the previous time period. But I think it wasn't up until towards the middle uh, act of the film when I really got really fully understood where we are situated in time um, because of the fact that both Katapa and Bahubali are together in both modern i guess present day where the father is dead as well as previous time um where uh the father isn't dead um there was a little bit confusion over what the relationship is how this is going etc and so i think that was easily remedied but didn't help this this the like for me to feel i guess grounded within the movie at all i think the pacing was a lot better than the first film as a result of taking this approach really setting up the um, the ending in the first film allowed me to just like kind of ease into knowing how this is going to end in this movie and as a result kind of figuring out the pacing on my own without the movie going into it but the movie did tackle a lot and so between it tackling so much uh, the recurring cast members and the fact that it's it's kind of hard to tell you know what, what how we're going to land to the future state I was finding myself a little bit confused but overall this was a much better structure to me than the previous film and so as a result i'm going to give it a, a solid two cents Fad, going over to you what did you think about it yeah i thought like the way they ended the first one we kind of penned it for almost like i think me and you liked it. i think admir didn't like it but both me and you were also like we definitely see where admir is coming from and we don't disagree very strongly where it almost felt like kind of cheap because you knew that he didn't do it because he's this evil person. There's someone else behind him, and you want me to watch the movie because of that. But then when you realize that they were both made in the same kind of time frame in terms of, like, he shot the whole film at once, and then he cut it up into two, basically, at any point, and he decided that was the middle point. Uh, I was I was pretty fond of the le- le- uh, second movie in terms of the way it explains why a lot of things are the way they are. Because the first one, you're just like, yo, like, why is Baladev the way he is? Like, there's mad things happening in the first one that you don't really know. But the second one keeps things less complicated and basically almost t- tries to untie as many knots as possible that it has created from the first film. And 
at least in my opinion, I think by the end, it manages to do a lot and tells a lot of, gives you a lot of answers. Like you said, you have a lot of questions after the first one. I think this one gives you a lot of answers, but I do agree with you in terms of like, there are some difficulties with casting the same character, same person for him and his dad. And there's a bunch of, there's a bit of time jumping in the movie. Like I was kind of telling you guys off screen, like the way I was a kind of grounding myself into the movie is looking at Dave Sena. Like if she was looking mad young and like princess, like, because she always seems to be around whenever he is around mm -hmm. uh, the moment he kind of branches out after the war, she's around from then. And, I definitely kind of, uh, this kind of goes into the second part of the two cents, but uh, definitely love the way they tackled Dave Sinner's character. And you can tell that even though the movies are two, like shot at the same time, that he has a larger vision in mind and it's not very linear in terms of the way he thinks about certain demographics or certain people. There's multi-layered people across both movies now that he has been able to show. Uh, all that to say, yeah, two cents for me. Uh, Admir, what did you think? You hated it. I can tell by your face, man. Yeah, it's done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, the, so two cents. It, yeah, it's not, a, it's, it's not a hate at all uh, guy, but I, the thing... So I, I drew it out like I, I drew it out because th there's something where I felt about the end. We'll, we'll talk about the end um, down the down the road. But there's something about spending a good portion of the movie with uh, the son. Then in that same movie, you go back. Then in the second movie, you're still in the past, basically up until the final 30 minutes or so. And then you come back to the son. I think. In terms of does the plot make sense, does it work sort of on paper? I think yes, um, because of everything you guys said where we need to sort of go back and understand some of the motivations of some of the characters here, uh, especially um, his uncle, uh, Balaldev. Like, why is he the way he is, right? A lot of these guys tend to be sort of uh, just evil for the sake of evil or you hear about some of the mistreatment they maybe had growing up, but it was, I think, relevant to see them two growing up as as um, him and and uh, Mahendra, right? No, uh, Aramendra, Aramendra uh, growing up. Yeah, growing up and, and seeing how that played out. So I think it's relevant with that. The thing, why, why it ends up being a one cent for me is by the time we go back to... Uh, current day mm -hmm. it's been so long that i almost don't care about the sun anymore i'm now f i'm only fully invested in uh, aramendra's journey and him dying right because that has now taken up so much of the screen time and i right. think so much of my emotional connection was with him because of what went down as opposed to his son i've seen this movie compared to the lion king quite a bit and you can see it it's very shakespearean right mm -hmm. um it would be like if i'm watching the lion king and after you know uh we start with like simba running away with like timon and pumbaa and shit they cut and then you see a background with mufasa and scar for like a good chunk of time and then you come back to like simba and then you finish from there so it, the i don't know what the answer is like i haven't thought enough about it to say where maybe the cut would be a little bit better but i think the structure of it lets down uh the son's storyline in favor mm. of the father so i don't know if that's intentional to say that the focus is about um aramendra bahubali if that's really the core story um but it, it does seem weird to me that that takes up so much time like the reason i loved it in the first movie is because we got two-thirds of it uh about uh, Aramendra and sort of his journey up to that point of almost realization essentially and then you get enough flashback where you're like okay cool I can see what's happening here mm -hmm. but when so much of the second movie was I think in the past and we watched them pretty close to each other so I almost can't imagine watching these like sort of a year or so apart right I think they were a couple of years apart right it just seems like by the time I got to the end of it I, I really didn't feel super invested in in the son's story arc at that point I almost felt like the hero of the story was 
the father in a way. And I, and I, I get that the ending, of course, puts both of them in really good light. But I do feel like it's a little bit too much time spent in the past. So the structure for me, unfortunately, does get a, a one cent because of that feeling a bit disjointed to me. I think what helped me with that comment was that, yeah, or that realization is that the because I felt the same way the first like the first movie halfway through the film everyone's recognizing him as his father um, he has like the early stage of the film is really identifying himself discovering himself what he likes to do being rebellious etc there's clearly some grandiose yeah. vision for this character but then in this movie it made it very clear that they're kind of played by the same actor because he's basically a reincarnation of his father Fair like enough. he Fair is yeah. a the reason I think they focus so much on his father is because his father is this basically saint-like um, character for mm -hmm. their entire, um, I don't even know what you would call it, their kingdom, their entire kingdom. Yeah. And because of that, he was viewed as the second coming of him, essentially, because of how gracious and kind and respectable he was. And true, so true. he, like, it was like for some reason portrayed in the first movie that he like carried on all of the same exact characteristics as his father which is mm. why i guess there's less of a need to flesh out his character knowing that he's basically the copy he's the descendant that's gonna do the exact same things but to your point like that makes a lot of the the stuff in the first film just have so much less weight to it yeah no i think you're making a great point by the way i think if you view it from that angle and i don't know what the sort of i'm sure there's an angle you can tackle it from that angle of is 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 there the theme of reincarnation here of him living and i think that comes up several times where Bilal Delph talks about we haven't heard his name in like mm -hmm. x amount of years when he's talking to Def Sana while she's chained i think in the first or the second movie something like that so i know that's sort of mentioned here and there and you're right maybe it is maybe it is meant to be the same right character who's inhabiting the values coming back um that's a fair point. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that again because that is a very, very fair point. Um, but I guess just to keep it interesting, I'll, I'll stick with the negative. And everybody we take can those. Bash we take me, those. Five out of six, we move. <laughs>